Hey, it's Deepak. I'm back in Analog A Hate Story, and I think we left off with the Nightmarish Bride, so it's from Ho. Hyo? Ho? I, I think it's Who. Ut. Uh. Ha. Min Chung. Correct? <laughs> It seems that in the year I spend visiting my parents, everything has gone to hell in my husband's family without his knowing. Cl clearly, I should have never left. He has an idea, but he doesn't understand just how bad things have gotten. When I left, it all seemed under control. The pale bride would be out of the right age to be married to the emperor soon enough, and we would be able to use that connection to bring favor to the family. A good plan, except it turns out the pale bride is not even close to ready for marriage. Age has nothing to do with it, it's the maturity that she lacks. When she first awoke, right before I left, she seemed a little confused. But that was hardly unexpected. She had a whole new family to get accustomed to, and it seemed obvious enough to, that anyone born so far in the past would have difficulty adjusting to modern life. But this is far beyond that. There's something simply wrong with that child. When I got back, the first thing he, uh, young, young, suck, suck's wife did was tell me all about how sorry she was for not being able to control the child. I rolled my eyes, as if a grown woman couldn't handle someone of her age. How are you going to ra raise my grandson like that? I asked. She was quiet, and then let me see the pale bride for her for myself. The first time I saw Young Suk trying to get her to do something as simple as sort out his laundry, she wasn't just disobedient, she was openly defiant. When I stepped in to ad admonish her, it had absolutely no effect. All she did was argue back at me. I tried every approach I could think of, appealing to filiality, explaining how important a virtue obedience was. He was trying to appeal to sentimentality. Everything. She just kept saying the same thing, that it wasn't fair to make her do it. Here's the obvious concern, and it's what I said to her. Are you going to tell your husband he's not being fair when he wants something from you? I thought that would put some sense into her, but no, she just answered yes. There's no way this unruly child could possibly be marriageable. Not like this. She'd be sent back within a day. And with good reason, what man could possibly want a nightmare like her in his life? Mother, uh, I I don't really know what to say about her, even now. This is the first time I've read what she wrote, and it's just, well, here, there's more. Here, read them for yourself. Thank you. I have so much stuff to read. So, mother, independent woman, then, wait. Ooh, I can talk to her. Do you want to talk? Just please, read them. If you want to know the whole story, those entries will explain. Okay. I'm gonna look and see how many I actually have, because I think it just shows... Whoa. Yeah, it only showed these three, so I have five. Mother. Dear Diary, the good news is, health-wise, I seem to be doing much better this month. I'm sure it isn't a permanent thing. It's happened before. I can't really remember how the doctor from the past ex explained it anymore, but he said it was pretty normal, and not something to get my hopes up about. Still, some days this month, month I actually had enough energy to want to move around. Not that I could move around, of course. I can't leave the house. A good girl shouldn't is what everyone keeps saying. But I have the energy to, at least, and that's something. The big news is that the woman who's supposed to be my adopted mother came back. I didn't really see her much before she left. I might as well have been meeting a new person. I wish I could say I had high hopes for her. That I had thought that maybe she'd be fine. That'd be a lie, though. I knew she'd be as bad as the rest. She'd be as bad as the rest the moment I saw her. And she was. Of course she was. She was even worse than sister-in-law. She gives these awful lectures. I can't even describe them. They're, they're that horrible. She's that horrible. I'm sorry. So, Hu Min Chung. Hu Min Chung. 
humming chunk. Hyo. I, I think I keep feeling like it's Hyo or Heo. Hyo? <laughs> I have no idea. It doesn't. I don't know. You doesn't feel right to me, but it probably is. If you're so worried, why don't you just explain everything to her simply and rationally? Chang Su asked me. My response was obvious. She's a woman. We're not particularly rational. He said, You know what I mean. I could hardly use it. But coming from a woman, perhaps she will understand that it's all for her own good. Maybe, I said, doubting it. But I tried, I tried anyway. She took her time arriving after I summoned her to my room. Can we speak? I asked her trying to keep my voice calm. She glared, then snapped. Fine. I asked her to sit down, but she refused. Look, I said, trying to speak to her as an equal. I still don't think my husband was right, but it was worth trying. I have been told you'd rather be called Hune. Is that right? She said yes, bitterly, not giving me much to go off of. That's a very pretty name, I said. Thanks, she said, but her voice was still unfriendly. So I guess she lost her voice. At once she moved in with the Emperor, I guess. My parents gave it to me. I said, you must miss them very much. She nodded. I don't understand, Hune. Why were you, were you so difficult with them too? No, she said. They were nice. They actually cared about me. They're nothing like you people. I sighed. I care about you, Hune. You're a part of the family. You're a Kim. Your parents are our ancestors. And I know that I know they'd think it's very important that we raise you right. If you want to be a bad unfilial daughter and treat us without any respect, well, you wouldn't be the first. Do you really think an old woman like me really cares that much about your opinion of me? I thought maybe I'd try maybe I'd try appealing to her self selfishness. Her marriage is important to the family, but clearly she doesn't care about filiality. It's you I'm worried about. Do you think any husband is really going to put up with the way you are, even for a second? She kept glaring at me. That's all you keep talking about. Marriage, marriage, marriage. I'm 14. I'm 14 years old. What's wrong with you? Why does everything have to be about some man? Why do I have to marry somebody you, that you picked? She screamed at me. I remained calm. You're going to be a, ro a royal concubine, Hune. We're not dumping you off on just anyone, there's no better man. I don't know if you were already engaged in the past, but your parents would do the same if they could. It's what's best for you. They would want this. No, they wouldn't, she shrieked. They wanted me to grow up. They wanted me to, an they wanted me to be an independent woman. That's what mom and dad thought was important. I don't want to be a concubine. I don't care about marriage. An independent woman? They wanted you to be a whore? I asked. My patience runs as thin as anyone's would be. I don't didn't believe for a second my husband's ancestors were the monster she was making them out to making them to be, and was sick of this. Get out! I snapped at her. Just get out. That is. <laughs> Where is your logic right now? <sighs> I are you just showing me that because you want to see more from her? That's not why. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't know what to say. She was cruel. So, 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 so cruel. Now that I've read her perspective, it, it doesn't... It doesn't change anything. Fine. She actually believed what she was saying. That doesn't make all of it right. I hate her. I don't care if she's long dead. I don't care if she was the... If I was the one who did it. I still hate her. I hate her, 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 I hate her. I, I, oh jeez, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to work myself up like that. I just, you don't pity her, do you? No, I don't. Good. Me neither. That's what I had to live with, reading with, reading what she wrote. She honestly believed that. It just reminds me of how I ended up thinking. How I completely gave up and believed her attitude. She tried to wear me down. She succeeded. She doesn't deserve pity, and I didn't deserve what she did to me. I just could never forgive her, ever. I, I, 
I, I'm really glad you understand. Sorry, I've calmed down now. It's just hard to think about even now. I really do hate her. Do, do you want to see it again? There was... There was one big fight I had with her. The one that changed everything. The one I finally lost. My diary makes it sound really dramatic. I know I was young at the time, but it really was. Just read it. It's exactly how it went. Well, thanks. Is it in block 7? My last stand, okay. I got a lot to read. Dearest mother, my mother-in-law has relieved me of my, any run responsibility for looking after the Pale Bride as a, ma a matter of pride. But I feel bad that a simple child is too much for me to handle, but I'm certainly glad she's not my problem anymore. Now I can put my undivided attention back to where it belongs, onto my husband and his ambitions. Tell me though, mother, because we didn't always get along that well, and it was never that bad, was I? Sure, we were both happy when I moved out. Well, perhaps I wasn't happy right away, I was more scared, but I'm sure you were relieved to have some space. But you would have never given up on me, right? I was never that bad, was I? Deep down, I worry. My husband seems content to take his time to have children, which is a decision I can certainly live with. But what about when we do? What if we have a daughter? Will I fail with her too? I've been telling myself that it's not me, it's her. She's a part peculiarly unruly child and it's not ordinarily that bad it's not right please tell me I have nothing to worry about please you know I never did like her when I woke up she was just this awful person who kept saying the most awful things never as bad as mother but still I didn't read any of her letters while when I was a alive of course but you know what really surprised me she made such an awful impression on my life. I hated her the most for so long. And she barely, she barely even ever mentioned me. All my suffering, it was just a minor distraction to her. Nothing more insignificant compared to her man. I... <sighs> There's one more from her that you should read. I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about her. There's just one thing I keep thinking though. Just one thing. I have no idea what her name was. Oh. Oh yeah, she's just wife. I just realized that. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna check the block index for a sec, just to see how much I actually have. Wow, I failed. And I can't show her these to get more, I guess. Nope. I don't know how to... I, oh, maybe they're from Mute. So I'd have to play Mute's path to get the rest of the story, I guess. Hmm. Okay, I'll stop being distracted and continue. My last stand. Dear diary, everything managed to spiral out of control so quickly today. I wasn't planning on it happening this way, but here's the point where I make my stand, I guess. That sounds dramatic, but... I won't just let them marry me off to some stranger. I won't. I won't let them. Just before dinner yesterday, Mother told me that I had to go do an interview with some man. The Emperor, I guess, for all I care. The way she put it was, I'd get a chance to see that he's a man you could fall in love with, or something stupid like that. As if I said in response, and I spent the rest of the evening thinking about what I could possibly do to make it clear I wouldn't let him do this. This morning, after breakfast, sister-in-law showed up in my room. Good morning, she said. To 
Today's a big day for you, isn't it? Mother-in-law wanted me to help you get dressed and all made up. You want to make a good first impression, after all. I glared at her and summoned up all my courage. No, I said. What? She asked. No, I'm not going. She left and Mother herself came in. This was it, I told myself. This was the, not the time to pause. I guess I can save. 54. She left and Mother herself came in. This was it, I told myself. This was the big moment. I'm not going, I said, before she could say anything. I'm not going to get dressed up. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to meet him. I'm definitely not going to get married, I shouted. For a moment, she said nothing and didn't move. Then she left too, without saying a word. I thought that would feel good, but it didn't. It just made me worry more. I couldn't have possibly won that easy, easily, I thought, and I hadn't, of course. After a few minutes, she returned with father, who looked incredibly angry. Mm, Chung says you are refusing to get ready for your interview, he said. Yeah, I stammer. I used to talking to him. I, w I won't go. I won't go. And I won't get married. He just walked over into... He walked over in just two strides and glared at me for a second. I had no idea what he was going to do. Then he slapped me in the face so hard it knocked me over. Yes, you will. He said, I'll drag you there kicking and screaming if I have to. My face in so much pain I forced myself to sit back up. I won't, I said, bracing myself for if he hit me again. He did. Yes, you will, he said. I couldn't keep this up. It already hurt so much I couldn't just brave that out. Then it came to me. If you make me do the interview, I said. I'll tell the Emperor that you've been conspiring behind his back. It was all I could think of. And all I could do was cross my fingers and hope that threat worked. It had to. He glared at me, and in that moment, I knew. It worked. The two of them looked at each other, and then they both left together. That was three hours ago. I don't know what's going to happen now, and I think my face is swollen. It still hurts, and I didn't want it to go that way, so that's me making my stand. I'll, I'll get to that, but now, but for now, please just look at everything else first. Okay. She looks so sad when she talks about her own entries. Drastic measures. The pale bride picked the worst of all possible days to throw another one of her childish fits, refusing to even get dressed for her interview. And this one, back, was with the Emperor himself. Emperor himself. Not even my husband was able to get her to listen. He had to personally apologize himself for not being able to bring her as scheduled and lied about a sudden illness. You have to do something about her, I said to my husband that evening. She's completely out of control. I know, he said. That is quite clear. He looked so worried. I hugged him and tried to comfort him. Everything would fall apart if something couldn't be done. She threatened to say something. Oh, hey, Lucky. Thanks for the game, man. She threatened to say something stupid and dangerous to the Emperor, and we were both scared that she might. Maybe it's time to consider doing something drastic, I said to him. He nodded. I know, he said. I can only think of one idea. I do not like it. I would rather not. Even hitting her was far worse than I would have wanted. He explained his idea to me, and I agreed it was that it was terrible, and I didn't like it either. But it would stop her from arguing. It stop her from ruining, ruining her own life. My husband was, as always, right. There was only one way. Uh-oh. Are they going to mute her somehow? Oh, we're missing one. Uh-oh. Oh, wait. Should I have children shown? Drastic measures? No? Never mind. Peace at last. Can I show you the... Yeah, I'll show you this one. Recently, the Pale Bride's temperament has improved immensely. It isn't simply that she's now quiet. It's that she's actually respectful and calmer. After rescheduling, she had an interview with the Emperor, and he was actually quite charmed with her. 
I'm just so happy for her own sake that she finally stopped resisting the marriage. It's all coming together now. A date has been set for when she'll be sent to live with him. And in the meanwhile, things at home have, have been peaceful, peaceful again for everyone. Actually, it's better than just that. I've been spending more time with her of her own free will. I've been give, giving her advice for coping with marriage. And now the girl actually listens politely. Otherwise, there's little else to write about. I wish there had been a better way to get her to behave, but in the end it seems to be working out. I still can't imagine how awful it would be if she refused to ever leave the home and simply made life hell for us. Or worse, if she got sent off and tried to pull away, pull any of that on her husband. She'd get sent back for sure. Maybe now things will finally start coming together for the family. I must admit, for a time, I doubted the optimism that Jung Su expressed in the 319th year, but now, it seems that he was right all along. What a relief. Of her own free will. I, I can't believe she actually said that. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. I can't believe she could have possibly thought that. I. Just unbelievable. Now I'm more confused. The new promise. Dearest mother, today the pale bride finally left home to live with her new husband. She is in a primary wife. There was no fanfare or ceremony for her departure itself, so instead last night we had a big, special big feast to commemorate. I know I've said bad things about her before, but it's not just that I was happy to see her gone. She's been better since mother and father-in-law managed to keep her quiet. The thought of it still leaves me really uncomfortable. She was always just a confused child. I hate the fact that my family considers her so important and neglects my husband. And I could certainly hate her for not appreciating that status and fighting it. But the fact that she doesn't understand the world, I can feel for that. It's not like I always understand myself. Regardless, it went very well. The big feast was my idea. She was happy to help with the cooking. Earlier, she had spent the afternoon getting ready the dress she was going to wear when she arrived with mother-in-law, and it seemed rather obnoxious, <laughs> rather anxious about it. While we cooked, I opened the wine early and poured it for her. I think she needed it. I told her the same story I told you a while ago about how I was scared when I first moved in. It seems as though it was a lifetime ago. And yet, despite all the strangeness, I've grown so accustomed to it, I'm getting messaged on Skype. You'll eventually grow to love him. I promised her. Just as you promised me all those years ago. I appreciate how good you'll have it. You've, you've read almost everything now. I know you've had, you've had faith in me, and I promise, I promise it hasn't been misplaced. Are you serious right now? That's my mom calling. And I gotta answer it. Or not. She hung up. There's just one more thing. I don't think you'll be surprised. You seem smart, I'm sure. I'm sure you've already guessed what it is. Still. Go ahead. Ask it. Ask me the obvious question. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Ask it. Ask me the obvious question. Oh. Hmm? I'm gonna save. No. Ah, I'm hit the wrong one. I'm sorry. What, what question? I'm confused. Uh. Um. I don't know what question. Is it this question? Sure. That that wasn't the question I meant, but well, I think you're a good person. I bet in love. I think you make. A good friend? 
Is that the answer you were looking for? No. What then? You feel more strongly? I don't... Th so what are you saying? I just think of you as a friend, nothing more. It's not like I'm answering your questions because I'm in love with you or anything. Ah, oh, jeez, it's not... I don't really... I... I mean, it sounded like you wanted to hear the answer. It's not like I wanted to prove myself just because I like you. I just think you should know. Just please ask it. What do you really look like? I don't know, but we'll find the big question next time, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.